John, you and I were talking about amino acids, no surprise, and often we talk about leucine. Everybody talks about leucine as it relates to muscle protein synthesis, but the other amino acids are incredibly valuable, especially the limiting amino acids, which are exactly that, oftentimes limiting in food, and they are essential. For example, lysine is a limiting amino acid, threonine, tryptophan, which is very low in collagen, um, threonine, I think I already said threonine, tyrosine, and methionine. Yeah. Yeah, the, the, the four that always get, should always get listed first would be lysine, methionine, tryptophan, and, ly and leucine, like you said. Right. Uh, those, those four uh, are always limiting in plant-based proteins. They're just not as high as they are in animal-based. Uh, and the next one would be threonine, which is so important for the gut. You know, when we think about threonine, just out of curiosity, so threonine is important in the gut because it generates mucin, and mucin is the protective layer in the intestinal lining, which is very unique because you need the amino acid threonine to be able to produce this. And as uh, Dr. Lehman had mentioned earlier, that if you are actually low in protein, then you are oftentimes low in this protective layer. So if you have a low protein diet, you really have difficulty with gut repair and protection. Um, so you know that makes me think about the RDA naturally as the minimum amount of the, a substance to allow for baseline health. The RDA, and I don't even know, um, this might be an off-the-wall question, do you know the RDA for threonine? Uh, I don't know that one off the top of my head. Um, Which just, would you, right? Because yeah, just based, yeah, just based on sort of the other ones, I would guess it to be sort of in the two grams per day range. Yeah, um, it's interesting. And this really just highlights the fact that you know, uh, protein is the black sheep of the macronutrient family, no matter how you slice it. Um, when you talk about the RDA, they really just talk about the overall protein amount. It doesn't really differentiate between animal protein, high quality protein. It truly is just this global amount, which is wrong, quite frankly. And yeah. the amino acids is really what we need. We don't really have a dietary need for protein per se. What we do have a need for are those amino acids. And um, it's interesting. So for leucine, the RDA is two to three grams per day. But Dr. Lehman and I would say that for optimal muscle health, it would be two to three grams per meal. Yeah, yeah. The, the RDA for protein dates back before we really had good methods for determining amino acids. And so we basically learned about protein based on nitrogen, which is a pretty vague term. The, the analogy I like to use about the protein requirement is saying we have a protein requirement is like saying we have a requirement for a vitamin pill. Right. We don't require the pill, we require, we require the 12 vitamins inside the pill. And just like that, protein is a food. We don't really require protein. We require the 20 amino acids and particularly the nine essentials that are inside the protein. And you know, so people, we, we need a correction in nutrition where we shift our focus to essential amino acid requirements and not just sort of a generic thing like protein. I think that that's a great point. And you know, a, another way to put it is protein or food is actually just a delivery system for nutrients. Yeah. That's what it is. And those right. nutrients, you know, as it relates to what we feel is important is the amino acid content. Yeah. And so much of our, what we think about protein, like on the label of a package is just a nitrogen analysis. It's not, it doesn't even mean it's protein. I mean, it could be something like urea or anything else that contains nitrogen. And so, so, so what would be an example of that? I think people would really find that very valuable. So let's say you look at the back of a, a food label and it says 15 grams of protein. And the food label is 15 grams of protein, but it's a hemp-based product or it's a, a plant-based product. I mean, a manufacturer could uh, layer in some type of a nitrogen product like urea or uric acid or something 
and it would register as nitrogen and by calculation would be listed as protein. It's, uh, it's why the measures of protein quality and stuff are so important to us because nitrogen values can be totally deceptive. I mean, there's, there's a classic example of infant formulas back in the late 70s or something, maybe early 80s, where a lot of formulas were coming in from Asia and they had been spiked with melamine which basically said they had much higher protein because they were putting in this artificial nitrogen compound. So that's weird. That's interesting. Is that just a food policy issue or was it just expensive? Why would that even happen? Um, again, the labeling dates back before we had good analytical tools. And so we've been able to measure nitrogen, you know, back into the probably 20s. And so it's just historically been how we've identified protein and, and those sorts of things. But now we have, you know, HPLCs and mass specs and we can do amino acids and it's time to move on to a much more specific analysis of the nutrients we need and not this generic food called protein. Right. I, I totally agree. And, you know, that's, that's where PDCAS and DIA system come in really handy because protein quality is hard, fast, biological numbers that cannot change and do not change. We cannot yeah. say something is of higher value or, I mean, we just cannot alter the amino acid content. Yeah, the, the PDCAS or DIAS, either one, get beyond just the nitrogen analysis, and they're actually based on the actual amino, the nine essential amino acids, plus the digestibility score. And uh, once again, the thing about plants is that the protein and amino acids in plants are there for the structure of the plant. Yeah. And a lot of them, maybe as much as half, are actually attached to fiber. And we all know we can't digest fiber. So those amino acids are just unless lost. Yeah, unless we're a cow, and which, <laughs> I mean, a cow is really the... Postpartum, but otherwise. Yeah. So you're right. So it's not the, the digestibility is much lower in plant-based products. Absolutely. Always is. The, the exception to that is when you start getting into isolated pro proteins, then you eliminate most of the fiber. Uh, most of the isolated proteins are between 65 and 90 percent pure. Uh, and so now you have much higher digestibility. So things like uh, soy protein isolate or something has pretty high digestibility versus soy in an edamame, which would be pretty low. 